station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston station is ready for the event. WATR radio, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is WATR radio. How do you hear me? WATR radio, we hear you loud and clear. And right now we're joined by uh, Rick Mastracchio and Colonel Mike Hopkins, uh, directly from the International Space Station, currently orbiting 230 miles above the Earth. Thank you very much for taking the time to speak with me today, gentlemen. Oh, we're very happy to, uh, to be here. And uh, let me just say a uh, happy belated birthday to, uh, to Rick. Yesterday was uh, your birthday. Uh, happy birthday, sir. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, so I gathered from reading your bios that you, uh, the, uh, you you guys didn't start out with the goal of being astronauts. Could you tell us a little bit about how you eventually got there? Oh, sure. Uh, I'll start. Um, yeah, I really, when growing up, I was always interested in math and science, but I tell you the truth, I never knew I could be an astronaut. Uh, I had graduated from the University of Connecticut and was working at uh, Hamilton Standard in Farmington, and uh, I saw an ad, basically I saw an a advertisement in a magazine saying uh, astronaut applications were being accepted. And that, at that point, I realized, wow, well, anybody could be an, ax uh, an astronaut with the right uh, cre uh, credentials. So I sent in an application. Of course, I didn't get selected as an astronaut, but eventually, uh, nine years after that point, I would get selected. And I, uh, I actually took a little bit different path. So I uh, studied engineering, aerospace engineering in school, and then went into the Air Force. And I'm actually still active duty Air Force, as you mentioned earlier. And so I had the opportunity uh, in the Air Force to test a lot of airplanes and uh, actually worked in the Pentagon a little bit and was, uh, you know, kind of like Rick, though I, I applied several times before I was accepted and uh, was very fortunate that it happened. Okay. Um... What do you think are some of the biggest benefits we derive from uh, things like the International Space Station and all the, the research and, and uh, uh, experiments that you're doing there? Yeah, I think uh, there's there's a lot of benefits, um, both uh, both real and and kind of in the, the spiritual sense of the exploration and, and always having a human presence. Uh, for the last uh, what 10, 11, 12 years, we've had a a human presence in space constantly, and I, I think that's pretty exciting, and and that goes along with the human spirit. Uh, from a science standpoint, boy, all kinds of science is happening up here, and uh, there's probably going to be over 200 experiments executed while we're on uh, during this this time on orbit. Uh, from things like the Alpha Magnetic Spectrometer, which is out there looking for the origins of the universe, uh, to things like um, vaccines and, and antibiotics and how they can counter bacteria that are actually resistant to antibiotics. And so there's benefits uh, for space travel as well as benefits for everybody down on Earth. And you're, just, you're doing a little more than just uh, experiments and uh, research. You also uh, are, have to do quite a bit of maintenance while you're up there, too. I understand you uh, had to do a couple of spacewalks in order to repair a cooling unit. Uh, and these were not your first spacewalks, obviously. I guess the closest I've ever come to that experience is my one and only skydive from, from 10,000 feet. Uh, could you describe a little bit for, our audi uh, for my audience what it uh, feels like to actually step out of that uh, space station and just free float in space? Okay, yeah, I'll give it a try. It's difficult to explain, but uh, I guess it depends. Uh, a couple, some of my spacewalks, I stepped out of the hatch at nighttime and some at the daytime. And I tell you, nighttime is actually a little better because you don't have the, uh, the vision of the Earth uh, swinging by you constantly and distracting you. But I tell you, when you go out there, you could really sense the motion of the Earth as you go around the Earth. You could sense that uh, motion. And uh, it's basically something that distracts you as you do your job. So I basically try to ignore it. But it's an incredible feeling to be out there. It's an incredible feeling of freedom. Uh, it's amazing how black space is at nighttime when the sun sets. And uh, we're just out there in the middle of nowhere doing our job. And you look around a little bit, and it's an incredible sense of, uh, of being so small out in the uh, vastness of space. It's got to be incredible. Um, I've, I've been following your, your Twitter feeds. Uh, Rick's Twitter ID is at AstroRM, and Colonel Hopkins' ID is at Astro Illini, I-L-L-I-N-I. -L -L -I -I. 
And uh, you both have been tweeting out some just absolutely amazing photographs. I know Rick has sent a, a really a, a really nice shot of downtown Waterbury as they flew over. And uh, Colonel Hopkins has sent out just some absolutely beautiful pictures of the northern lights. Um, what are you using to, to get these shots? And more importantly, uh, what's your opinion regarding the value of social media to the space program? Well, I think uh, social media is, is huge for the, the space program because it helps get the message out and it reaches people that probably haven't thought about the space program and, and don't realize um, that we have had people up in space for the last uh, 12 years and and what the International Space Station is doing. So if we can pique interest in, in what's happening up here, I, I think that's a good thing. I think it's great that, uh, that, that people are out there and they're connected and they're sharing things, uh, some of these amazing experiences that we're having. I know and to answer the, the first uh, part of your question, we're just used. The, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, real I quick. The answer to the first part of your question, we're just. Ahead, yeah, we're. Go ahead. Uh, we're just using standard off-the-shelf uh, photo equipment uh, from the uh, space station's cupola windows. Oh, so no, no special high-tech equipment, huh? Nope. Um, now I, I know when you when you arrived at the space station, you brought the the Olympic torch with you. Uh, did you? Uh, are you following the Olympics while you're there? Oh, yeah, we have uh, a feed from the ground almost uh, continuously, and we're also being uplinked uh, videos of some of the sporting events. So, yeah, we were watching uh, ski the ski jumping last night. We were, I was watching speed skating the day before that. So, yeah, we're following it along. It's hard because, you know, we're constantly working up here, but we catch a few, minute, a few minutes of it here and there. What would be one of your favorite sports? Yeah, I tell you, you know, anything with the speed, the downhill uh, skiing and the speed skating are, are, are pretty exciting to watch, I think. Now, you both flew in the Russian Soyuz to get to the space station. How does riding in the, in the Soyuz compare to uh, the shuttle? Yeah, I've uh, flown on the shuttle three times now, and on the Russian Soyuz vehicle, it was my first time a few months back. And uh, it's quite a different experience. Uh, the space shuttle is obviously a much bigger vehicle. It actually leaps off the launch pad. It accelerates much quicker off the launch pad. The Soyuz is a, a very reliable, very efficient vehicle, but much, much smaller. And, of course, it reaches the same velocity eventually, but accelerates uh, much slower off the launch pad. Both of them were exciting rides. I understand you're going to be doing a, a live show from the, 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 the space station on National Geographic Channel in March, just before you head home. Uh, would you like to do a little promotion for that? Yeah, that's correct. Uh, Mike leaves around March 11th or 12th or so, and we'll be doing a live show from up here around March 14th. I believe we'll be doing a couple of shows up here from up here. And I believe it's about a two-hour show, and we'll be doing three 10-minute live intervals directly from the space station here on the National Geographic Channel. I know a lot of folks on the ground are excited about it. We're excited about it, and I think it's going to give folks some great insight on how the space station uh, works and how we live up here day to day. Great. Um, well, before we go, Rick, maybe could uh, could you share some of your memories of growing up in Waterbury? Oh, yeah. Well, I grew up on the east end of Waterbury, attended Chase School and Crosby High School. Uh, I can remember I used to play, spend a lot of time at Hamilton Park and Municipal Stadium. I played football uh, for the, uh, the various leagues as well as high school league. Uh, I spent a lot of time driving down, up and down I-84, going back and forth to school and work. And, of course, uh, I think I had some great memories in Waterbury. I lived there until I was uh, about 27 years old. And uh, I can't wait to get back and enjoy uh, some hometown food and, of course, uh, visit with all the folks. Well, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but the uh, Crosby High School basketball team is now rated, uh, is ranked number 10 in the state. So I'm sure you'd be excited to hear about that. I want to thank you both very much for your time today. And it's, this has actually been an honor and a pleasure to speak with you both. Safe travels. Thank you very much. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the WATR radio portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from KSPR-TV. It amazes me that that's still standing. Love it. Thank you so much, Larry. And Sherry Gibson showing us.
IFB check, one, two, three, four, IFB check. At least as we head into the next few days, we're not going to see activity like that. At least that won't harbor yeah, those. We can hear you loud and clear. melting over the next few days. Now, as far as if you want to send in your pictures, all you need to do is send us an email. That's weather at KSPR.com. Or you can always chime in on our KSPR Weather Facebook page. Make sure you like it. And then you can go ahead and post those pictures directly in our wall. And I haven't seen it a lot in a while. So, guys, feel free to send those in. Back to you. Thanks, Lindsay. KSPR has a very special treat for you this morning. We certainly do a truly out-of-this-world <laughs> interview. Joining us live from space is astronaut Rick Mastri Mastritino and astronaut Michael Hopkins. Gentlemen, thank you both for being with us this morning. Just floating there. Welcome back. <laughs> Now, before we get to it, I want to start. And yeah, thank you very much. It's great to be with you. With NASA since... That's right. We're going to work with a delay here. I'm sorry about that. Rick, <laughs> now, you, you, uh, we're going to start with you. You've been with NASA since the early 90s. You've been in three space flights, and you've spent more than a month in space, and currently you're serving as the flight engineer on ISS for Expedition 38. And, Mike, you're a colonel with the United States Air Force, and more importantly, you are a Missouri native, grew up in Richland, Missouri, and in 2009 you were selected as one of 14 members to be a part of the 20th NASA astronaut class. Mike, I'm going to start with you. We spoke with you back in September, and while you were training, training in Russia for this mission, you told us this was going to be a very busy mission with more than 200 experiments to be done, standard maintenance on the space station, and even the Olympic torch making a stop into space. How are those experiments going so far? Yeah, the experiments are going fantastic. Uh, they just keep going, too, every day. Uh, there's a lot of experiments that are happening uh, even while we sleep, such as the alpha magnetic spectrometer, which is out there looking uh, at the origins of the uh, of the universe. And then when we have resupply vehicles come up, we get, uh, we get a lot of new experiments on those as well, such as uh, when the orbital supply vehicle came up, we had uh, some ants on board, and we got to observe their behavior in the microgravity environment. So uh, the experiments are going fantastic. Awesome. Now, back in December, on Christmas Eve, both of you conducted a spacewalk to fix a malfunctioning pump module on the cooling system for the International Space Station. I understand there was some concern about a spacewalk because a previous one didn't go so well. How did this one go? And kind of explain to us what needed to be done. Okay, yeah, we did a series of spacewalks, and the concern was that a uh, previous spacewalk last summer, uh, one of the astronauts started getting water in his helmet. But, of course, uh, NASA is famous for solving problems, and the, the smart folks on the ground got together and figured out ways to, uh, to fix the suits that we have up here and to avoid any problems if we did get uh, water in our helmets. So we weren't too concerned about, the, uh, about that happening. Uh, the space station coolant system basically had a problem with a valve, and we had to go outside and replace a, a large 800-pound uh, box, if you will. And the spacewalks went perfectly. We got two spacewalks, one to pull the old one out and one to install the new one, and everything went very well. Describe to us the feeling, if you will, from, I guess, stepping outside and being able to see more of, more of space. What's it like being outside of the space station? Yeah, it's, it's truly an incredible experience uh, for me. These are my first uh, spacewalks. Rick uh, is very experienced with that. But, you know, when you first uh, are going out that hatch for the, for the very first time, it, it's just this whole mix of emotions. It's, uh, you're, you're very excited. You're very nervous. You're very focused. You're very, it's, uh, it's an extremely intense environment. And when you, when you first step out and you get to see the Earth without any obstructions, without any windows around you or anything, just through your, your uh, face mask, it, it's, it's unbelievable. And uh, so it's, it's a very exciting, but again, probably the most intense thing I've ever done. That is certainly awesome. And I'm noticing how you guys are kind of just letting the microphone float around there, which brings me to my next point. What's it like experiencing the weightlessness of space? Can you explain that to us? What does that feel like? It's uh, difficult to explain uh, how to, what it feels like. Uh, it's probably the best way to, best analogy I can come up with is uh, floating in your pool. When you're floating in your pool, you know, you know you're very free, and uh, that's the best analogy I can come up with. But uh, I like to say that you know, space is a place where uh, the impossible is easy, but uh, some of the easy things become much more difficult because we don't have gravity. Oh, my gosh, I'm so jealous. I would give, like, a pinky finger, probably a whole right hand to be up there with you guys. Tell me what it's like. Uh, I know it's an amazing honor to be in space, but it, it's kind of cramped, I would imagine, on a space station. Uh, does it get lonely? And when's the last time uh, either of you guys have been able to speak with your family? 
Yeah, you know, uh, the space station is actually, actually quite large, and, and so there's a lot of space, and as we're working throughout the day, you'll go, you'll go hours without uh, maybe seeing one of your crewmates. Um, in, in terms of the loneliness from the family wow. and everything, the, uh, yeah. the NASA and the other organizations do a great job of keeping us in contact with our families. We actually are able to talk to them just about every day, so uh, it works out great. Now, what's next for you guys? Uh, I mean, there's a lot going on, so after we're done with this interview, I'm sure you have some more interviews, but what's next? What are some other uh, important projects you'll be working on? Oh, yeah. So today, um, actually, we're going to finish out the day with a lot of uh, ocular health. Uh, so there's, we've had issues with um, our eyesight up, up on orbit in the microgravity environment. And so actually, both Rick and I today are going to spend some time taking pictures of our eyes uh, using a couple of different machines to, to do that. And then folks on the ground, they'll actually help us out as we do it. And then they'll do a lot of the analysis as well on, on what that data means. Now, we uh, managed to find you guys on Twitter and follow some of you on Twitter. And a lot of cool pictures. We saw one, Mike, you posted one over a volcano. Uh, there's some other pictures you've posted. So you get to really stay connected to us back at home through things like Facebook and Twitter. Tell us about uh, some of the pictures you've taken. Yeah, you know, it's amazing. Uh, I've, I've taken hundreds and thousands of pictures because as you start looking down at the earth up here, it's just one thing after another that you see and you're, you're so excited. And so you just start snap, snap, snapping. And then all of a sudden you realize, oh, I've got to go through 300 pictures, 400 pictures. Uh, you know, right now uh, in the past couple of weeks, the, the northern lights have been absolutely incredible. So that's, that's always exciting to see. Uh, it's always nice to try and capture uh, hometowns and cities and, and then the mountains and the uh, islands. Gosh, it's, it's just incredible. The, the number of things that are fun to take pictures of. Gentlemen, thank you again so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to explain to us, us normal people, what it's like <laughs> up there. We wish you the best on the rest of this mission and a safe return coming up in March. And astronauts Rick Mastraccio and Michael Hopkins live from the International Space Station. So cool. That's awesome. Got yeah. safe travel. Thanks for taking the time. Very cool. We should just pass it's our mics like that too, yeah. right? Would that, would that work? No. <laughs> Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event. Thank you, WATR Radio and KSPR TV. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications. Nice work, you guys. Thanks, Mark.